All right, we are live for another episode of Technology Tuesday. How you doing? I'm your host, Greg Russell, here with my good friend, partner in crime, Mr. Jerry Franklin Poe. And if you are checking us out live, hit us uh, live, hashtag live in the comments. And if you are checking us out on the replay, just hashtag replay in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And thank you for joining us either live or in a replay. We appreciate you being here. We got an excellent show lined up for you today, and we can't wait to share with you some details that you as an entrepreneur need to know and can share with others if you find them making these mistakes. So we're about to dive into uh, our content and share with you website woes and pitfalls that you need to avoid as an entrepreneur. And that's coming up right now on Technology Tuesday. All right, all right. That's right, folks. We are back in the building, in the studio, Technology Tuesday, every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here bringing you practical knowledge, practical applications to have practical solutions for your business. I know Greg had a lot on his mind uh, today when it comes to web. We get questions all the time about building websites, hosting, what what should you have for your web presence, Um like what? How how do you design stuff? These questions come out quite frequently. Um, between uh, Greg, myself, we hear them from people all the time. Like, what do you need? What do you have? What's the right option? <laughs> and a lot of people go out there and they pick options. They pick solutions for where they currently are, not thinking about where they want to be in the future. Sure. And that can cause them roadblocks. It can it could be a stumbling, uh, or a brick, a speed bump in their business. Uh, because you pick what's convenient, what's easy, what's fast, uh, what mm. seems appropriate at the time, but your business can be expanding and you're not prepared for the future. That's right, man. And uh, it's funny because uh, this show topic came up because of basically an experience you had and we mentioned it and then we like, we're going to come back to it. So um, I know you were dealing with a client and share with us what happened uh, with that client and your experience with trying to navigate uh, one of these platforms. And I don't remember which one it was. So if you remember, let us know. Yeah, well, I was asking you some questions about, uh, was it Squarespace? I think I said that's what it's called, Squarespace. Mm -hmm. And I was asking if you had experience with it. You know, I, I had seen the commercials for it on TV. You know, <laughs> they make it look all cool and jazzy. It's like, oh, look what you could do real quick. Like you can snap your fingers and boom, you got a web page, you're up and running. You know, the commercial makes it seem like magic. And I was just curious, like, how easy is it because of what we use? What we use on our side with the, we have a word -based, WordPress based site and some of the tools that you introduced me to that we have for our platform make things so easy and so simple and give you so much flexibility. So I was thinking to myself, like, hey, if I go in here and I got to update this stuff, uh, is it going to be as easy as what we normally do? Like, how much time? Like, you know, you got a project you're trying to put in your mind, like, yeah. how much time do I need to set aside for this before I get in because I got other stuff to do? So is this something I can get in there real quick, fit it in between this and this, or is it like I got to really block off some time to get in there because I might have to, you know, do some deeper surgery is it a quick <laughs> fix or is it something where we like all right we got block off the whole afternoon and yeah so that was that was the initial question and then you know um i was surprised by the limitations i was surprised by how many things you could not do once you got in there like what was available what wasn't available how much customizations were there versus how much customization was not there so uh, we didn't have as much flexibility. What you're talking about is the flexibility inside of Squarespace. And this was a project you brought on to work on behalf of a client. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. So they already had the site. The site was already built. But the, the challenge with, you know, having a website and keeping it updated. So the person who's supposed to be updating it had disappeared. 
you know, you know, it's almost like, you know, they, I don't know. They got, I don't know if they got kidnapped. I don't know if they like, you know, <laughs> fell off the face of the earth. It was like, oh, we're supposed to have this such and such, this dude doing this. And like dude's ghost, dude's like, yo, I'm out. And it, like stuff hasn't been changed since, you know, two or three years ago. And it's like, well, we need to change some stuff in here. And the person who's supposed to be doing it didn't do it. Um, and crazy. at the same time, crazy things weren't. times I've heard that, Jerry, about the person we had who was updating the site is either no longer with us or they <laughs> they just disappeared. I think there's a a a place where all of these um former web people are are being kidnapped in some foreign country and they're all together. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But see, I I heard I've heard this so many times. It's unfortunate that Yeah, man. That's what it was like. It was like a person's just like we had such and so we had, you know, person X, Bobby, you know, Steve, whoever it is, you know, Chris doing this mm -hmm. and now chris is left chris is gone chris and you know chris didn't tell nobody he was leaving chris just like went went away someday it's like when you watch those movies like yo dad you know those old movies like yo dad went to get some milk and he never came back you know it's like <laughs> like chris wanted to get like a snickers and you know slim jim and never came back uh so like this stuff hasn't been updated it's just still like it's been whatever it was since they initially set it up. And then there were some things that weren't set up properly. So when you look at how you, you you Google something and then it's like, well, it comes up with the wrong page name, the wrong page title. It doesn't have the right picture. You know, if you, if you want to tag something and put it on social media, uh, it doesn't have like the picture that you want to see on the Facebook or, or, you know, whatever it is when it puts, when you put the link in there, you know, so right. like all that stuff that people don't really think about, like they don't think about those types of things all the time because they're not like tech people. They're not like web designers right. or uh, web-based thinkers. So you're, I mean, I wouldn't consider you a web designer per se, but what were the challenges you had when you went to update it? Yeah, I wouldn't consider myself, like, I don't know what I would consider myself. Like I <laughs> I, I just get stuff done. I'm a yeah, get, stuff, get done stuff done person. So I'm a, I'm a get her doneer person. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna figure it out. I I adapt. I'm more I'm a chameleon when it comes to technology. So like I can you can show it to me and I can figure out how to get what I need, move maneuver stuff. Yeah, I didn't go to school for web design or graphic design, but like some of the stuff I can pick up really fast. Uh so the the challenges I saw and just in terms of flexibility was like you were limited with like colors, like once you picked a certain color for one thing, it had to be that same color everywhere that thing exists. Uh, so what I if you want to have I one button stand out from another button? It was a button, right? And you, you wanted to yeah. have a button on this page be one color and a button on another page be another color. But it was like, no, you assigned the button to red. Now every button you ever put on. All the buttons are red. red. Yes. Uh, and I was like, what type of mess is this? It's like. Like if you if you want to have one thing be highlighted, like do this, like register here, go there, and you didn't want it to be the same color as every other thing that people click on because you want to bring attention to it, it wouldn't let you do that. It wouldn't let you customize something so because it would basically match up the buttons to the colors of the theme, right? And which yep, is okay to a certain extent, but if you wanted something to stand out from the theme. So people would actually see it more prominently. It wouldn't let you do that. So there, there's a, uh, a a a pretty understood rule when it comes to direct response marketing online, is that your buttons, the thing that you most people want to click on, should not be the same colors as your design and get lost in the design because it just looks like everything else. It should be a standout color. Um, but a lot of times clients don't know that and um they make the button look like part of the website because it's all supposed to be branded and it is however if you make it all branded it doesn't really call attention to the button um so that that's the design thing but that's interesting that this platform wouldn't allow you to do that um there are some other things that uh i've heard and seen from clients over the years when it comes to these platforms and um was there anything else that that um, limited you? I know the button was one. Was there anything else? 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, I get the, the, the whole goal was to streamline it, to make it really simple. But sometimes the simplicity make things harder to, to change stuff. Like, so if you want to go into settings and you want to set stuff up a certain way, um, it, it was, you know, they're trying to make it really, it's like they're trying to make it simple enough for any person can go in there and figure it out. But if you're trying to go in there and do something that's more sophisticated, it makes it actually harder because now you got more steps to go through because it's like you got to go to multiple places to make a change, it's like a universal change. So, so yeah, there was just some things there that, I saw, well, okay, I can see how this could be really easy for a person who doesn't want to work hard. I really shouldn't say work hard, but like they don't want to think about how to do stuff. Right. Or, but I mean, it's, it's the less options actually makes it more challenging than having more options. It's like the more options, it actually becomes easier if you know yeah. how to use the options. But it's really just based on where where you where you are. So yeah, yeah. it was just again just different. Um and I, I just saw that you know you you I mean it's more like when you, you think back to when we played video games, right? Like you have a controller with like two buttons versus a controller <laughs> with six buttons. And it'd be like, oh, this button this one has six buttons, it's gonna be harder to play. But actually it was like it's easier to play because the buttons do different things and then with the two buttons you got to like do more Man. to try to get the two buttons to do the, the same as six buttons the, the first the first video game the atari only had one button <laughs> At least yeah one I button with a joystick yeah, yeah one button joystick on the button. side one button on the side he was like <laughs> you know you're like doo, 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 you know yeah, yeah so it's like the more the that's what it really comes down to is it's like um i could get for a person who's who's new and mm -hmm. they want to throw something together really fast but when you start to think about where you want to go and what you want to do uh, long term, like you just talk about with direct response marketing, uh, it, it just makes it much more challenging. Yeah. So I'm going to just put these companies on blast and just 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 tell it like it is. Uh, the And there's plenty of them out there, but the two biggest ones that are popular for people to try to get a quick, cheap, fast website is Wix and Squarespace. And these companies that have these platforms are great for hobbyists. And if you just need a website for your, you know, your school play or something like that, but they are not very user-friendly for entrepreneurs in terms of things you need to grow your business. And, and some of the uh, more technical challenge comes with two things, Jerry. Number one, when people come to me and they say, hey, my website is in Wix or I'm thinking about going to Wix, I I, <laughs> I let them know, hey, you're either in jail because you already have one or you're going to jail. Meaning if you whatever you build inside of Wix or inside of WordPress, you cannot take it anywhere else if you ever decide to move. And if you're going to spend the time, even if they make it easy and effort to build anything um, and you need to move for whatever reason, you can't with those platforms. You have to start over from scratch. You cannot backup or export any type of thing outside of your um, functionality with Wix and Squarespace. So whatever the functionality they give you is the only things you can use. You cannot bring in outside stuff. You can connect outside things. It's they, they just have you there. That's what these are the features that you can use. And there's really not that much else. Uh, the other thing, Jerry, that they really lock you down on is the ability and not both of them. I can't remember which one, but when it comes to the domain name, your domain name, your .com, your .net, your .org, whatever, once you have it inside of Wix and or Squarespace, you don't have access to change and update DNS stuff. Now, in the past, that wasn't so important, but now there's so many services that allow you to put on a subdomain so that you can redirect specific traffic to a specific service um, that you need to be able to update your DNS. Now, DNS is on the technical end and most people don't mess with it and that's fine, but 
you need someone to be able to do it if it comes up and more times than not, especially today with the types of services and things um, that we talk about, services that we talked about, Jerry, on AppSumo, some of them will tell you, hey, CNAME, we can, you can make this a part of your business by putting um, a subdomain in front of your, your domain name. So now your company name is in the URL and these companies will not let you update that. And so then you're either stuck because you either can't move the entire site somewhere else. So if you wanted to, you're, 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 you're stuck with that domain and you're stuck getting another domain. So they really limit to you on the things. And there's some other things that I found that I'm gonna share um, right quick about some of these other companies. And I'm gonna tell you what you can Google so you can do this uh, research for yourself. Um, so we'll just jump over to the desktop. Boom, right? So if you Google why you should not use Squarespace, you'll find a whole list of sites. And this is just one of them in the top search there. And it will go through and tell you some of the reasons why. Um, so here they're talking about, and this is old. This is from 2018. I didn't realize it was that old, but it's still, um, some of the information is still pretty relevant. They talk about the SEO and I'm pretty sure since then, Squarespace has probably done some things to improve their SEO. But some of the things are still, valid like this you don't own the website right it is not your code whatever you put in there stays in there you can't export it you can't bring it back right um i don't know if they've improved customer service but their <laughs> expenses right usually most people don't realize their expenses because they are tricky to understand because they're like hey you can have this quote unquote for free but then when you really need some things like to use your own domain name they charge you if you want to charge for products and services that's another fee they add on and then it starts getting pricey very quickly um, it's, the, it's the a la carte it's the a la carte model uh-huh uh-huh and then, right, so you get to get the you got a plane ticket but if you want to take a bag it's extra <laughs> exactly exactly uh but then i like this one here because there's like don't believe this squarespace review click the you know go go see the other thing so it, it brings you over to the better business and now even though that article was from 2018 um these reviews are relevant right so 106 in, in the last 12 months um and you can see here that these this one was you know this month of august 2024 um august 2024 right so you they have some legitimate complaints um, and people just not being aware. So we're talking about that DNS and DNS stuff, dealing with your domain names and how your domain name functions is a problem for these companies, right? So Squarespace and um, Wix don't give you the functionality that you need if you're a business. Again, if it's a hobby and you're not trying to spend any money, those are great. But if you're trying to run a business where you need the functionality of what the internet can provide in terms of finding new customers, um, communicating with those customers in the ways of, um, you know, chat bots and automated systems. You can't really use that type of website because you can't add extra code to it because they don't allow you to do that. Anywho, that's what I wanted to, to make sure everyone was aware of when it comes to your website. Um, if you have a business and you're trying to, you know, make money, online and find clients or grow your business using the internet these are services that are not really tailored for entrepreneurs and over the years they have tried to get better but the way they the way their website is set up it is jail you can go there but you can't take anything out and i highly recommend clients do not use wix or squarespace or any others and now there's a, a plethora of others that are coming out that are AI based where it's like, well, you just tell the AI what you want and it'll automatically go build your website. And those are kind of a hot, a hybrid, but at the same time, you still are limited to what you can do when, especially you have AI uh, doing it for you. It's not like it's a open, it's an open platform. Um, even today in 2024, I still highly recommend a WordPress website. WordPress is still one of the most used platforms for um, building website. And there's two versions of it. There's wordpress.com um, where you can go get an account under WordPress and it's kind of similar to Wix and Squarespace that way. But then you have wordpress.org where you can actually download the engine of WordPress and put it on your own host and you are free to do whatever you want to do with it. And if you know the right type of plugins and themes to use, it can be super easy for the average person. And a lot of times, 
WordPress gets a rad, bad rap because most people don't know which plugins and which themes to put together to make it easy for the average person to um, be able to build, maintain, and update their own website without the need for developers, coders, and things like that. So my vote is still for WordPress. Um, if you have any questions about that, go ahead and let us know um, in the comments or if this is on the replay, just put it in the comments and we will answer your questions about WordPress. Jerry, with that, do you have any uh, any of your thoughts? Because I know- I you think you- I mean, I think you summed it up. I think you summed it up quite well in terms from the from the tech Jedi perspective. <laughs> uh, you put a little bow on it, but yeah, like uh, I I believe having more options and more flexibility is going to serve you long term. And the plugins, that the key to it, like the key that I've learned over the years with uh, you know some assistance in, from you give you credit credit Thanks, is due sir. is that the plugin the plugins are the magic like having the right plugins make a world of difference and uh yeah it's made my life so much easier yeah man yeah. uh it took me a while to to figure out that but i don't know man i haven't actually jerry i haven't had the uh the wordpress course i haven't done it live in over two years man i, I you know it may be time to to rock another one what you think yeah, I mean, well, it's it's for those. I would say for those watching, if you want to know some of the secret sauce, the behind the scenes stuff that we do to build to create some of these. I mean, you can just check out check out my website, uh, jerrypoe.com. Check out Greg's site, askgregrussell.com, and you can see the quality of the actual work. And if those are the things you'd like to learn about how you build something that looks like that, how do you build something that has all of those bells and whistles, but not having to stress yourself out and, you know, lose your hair or get a bunch of grades and like, <laughs> how do you make it really easy? Um, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. To me, it's like, how do I do the sophisticated stuff without having to get a doctorate in HTML. coding? <laughs> yeah. HP. Coding. All the other coding stuff. stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's definitely easier if you know the right stuff. And uh, we, we, I think we've cracked the code on that. So with that, man, I want to thank you guys for tuning in again. Let us know in the comments where you're tuning in from and if you caught us live or on the replay. Uh, and with that, make sure you tune in every Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for another episode of Technology Tuesday that will help you grow your business, save time and use technology that can help you. So with that, I will talk to you guys next week. Jerry, take care. Thank you for tuning in. All right, folks.